I'm sure most of you have seen the fancy loaders on those sites winning all of those awards. Now how exactly do they do it all? Well, I'm building one for my wife's new lactation consulting business, and I'm going to show you in the next two videos how to create a loader that preloads image-based assets and then create a reveal animation for the main content. So in this video, we're going to work in Figma to design a unique yet relevant loading animation of dripping milk, and then use HTML and CSS to get it all ready. Now in the next video, which is gonna be released in a couple days, which will be linked in the YouTube description when it's released, we'll then take the Greensock animation platform along with a library called Images Loaded to finalize the project. All right, so let's get started. If you enjoyed this video, check out designcourse.com where you can learn UI, UX, CSS, and more with my custom interactive platform that makes learning fun and easy. Alrighty, so we're gonna get started here in Figma. I have a new blank document opening. We're gonna hit the F key to get out the frame tool. And we're just gonna choose like iPhone 14, that's fine. Um, this loading graphic will work for anything, it's real small anyways. Now I am going to use a custom color code called AFCCC5. It's kind of just like this greenish sort of light color. All right, so now what we'll do is create the actual drip illustration and then we'll animate it after. So we're gonna hit O for the circle tool or the ellipse tool, whatever you wanna call it. And we're going to give this one a, a, a white fill background, all right? Um, we're gonna duplicate it. And that first one over here, we're gonna rename that from ellipse one to mask, cause that's gonna serve as our mask. Uh, we're just gonna call this one outline. So now your two layers should look like this, mask and outline. Now they're both the same, so we're gonna take that outline which is on top currently and remove the fill. Let's temporarily hide the mask. We're gonna give this one a stroke, the outline layer. And we'll make it about size four and then white, okay? All right, so we'll bring back the mask and we can't really see much um, of anything. Uh, at this point, actually we will hide the mask. Let's go ahead and design the, or the actual drip. So we're gonna hit O again, shift and alt, scale out, We'll just come out here in the center, use your guides. We'll make this white. All right, then we're gonna use the polygon tool, which gives us a triangle by default. So I'm just gonna drag out something roughly that will fit approximately. I am gonna take the border radius down just to kind of make it like a smooth sort of uh, shape here. I'm just holding shift and alt, trying to get to these edges as close as possible. We'll make this white. We'll take both of these and then we will choose up here, union selection, which is right there. Now when we do that, we're gonna right click and choose flatten as well. Okay, so that's our drip drop <laughs> situation. And now we're gonna bring back the mask. And when I select both the union shape, which is our drip, let's go ahead and rename that to drip. We'll take our mask. So we're selecting both layers right over here and we're choosing uh, use as mask. All right, so it's important that that mask has a fill, otherwise this will disappear as well. All right, so one final thing we'll do is hit O again, and we're going to hold Shift and Alt and create kind of like a big oval at the top, make it white, and then just drag it. Let me just uh, zoom up here. We'll just drag it right between the mask and the drip. All right, so that gives us this. So now when we move this drip outside, we won't see it because it's obviously contained within a mask. So we wanna position this right here just to where it's not visible, like right around there. All right, so for our mask group, oh, we also have our outline, let's put that in there as well, just above the mask layer. So your layer structure should look like this over here. Okay, awesome stuff. So now what we can do is take this whole thing and we can right click and copy as SVG. Now at this point, we can go ahead and create our actual project. And to do that, I'm gonna get a new terminal up here and let's uh, zoom up just a bit. I'm gonna go to CD code and we are going to create a Vite project, all right? So Vite is a JavaScript bundler. It's, a, it's, it's relatively new as compared to something like Webpack. 
all right? And so we're gonna start our project with that simply because most of these projects that would, anything that would include like a loader would obviously benefit from having something like a, a JavaScript bundler, all right? So the way we create a new project with Vite is MPM create Vite at latest. Now, of course, you will need Node Package Manager. So just Google how to install the no NPM, the Node Package Manager, um, Node.js on your machine um, if this prompt does not work essentially. So when we do that, it's gonna go ahead and say project name. Um, we're just gonna give this um, awesome hyphen loader. Now it's gonna ask you to select a framework right here. For us, we're just gonna choose vanilla JavaScript because we're cool and just regular JavaScript because we're scared of TypeScript. All right, so code peer app, ah, let's hop into CD Awesome Loader. Um, NPM I will install any of the dependencies or of the project that's created from the Vite at latest. And then we can go ahead and hit type code period if you have Visual Studio Code for your code editor, which you probably should if you don't. Um, otherwise, you might be some type of weirdo using like Notepad or something. You don't want to use that. All right, and so here's the basic uh, project folder structure with Vite. Um, there's a bunch of, there's some fun, some things we don't need. Like we don't need this JavaScript, I, let's delete that. We don't need this, I, yeah, there's a JavaScript. It just has some stuff that we absolutely don't need. Like we don't need this div ID app in the index to HTML. We don't need counter.js. It's just kind of like their boilerplate starter stuff. And then finally we'll go to main.js and we're gonna delete all that, all right? Now I wanna write actual SAS, all right? And so to do that, we're gonna type link, CSS main dot SCSS. Ooh, very strange. Why aren't we putting just a CSS file there? Well, it's because Vite will be able to understand that we're working with SAS and it will automatically replace this when it does its building. Um, so that's really cool. Now, obviously we need this file to exist. So we're going to create a CSS folder. Let me zoom up and then also a file called main dot SCSS. All right, so we don't have to watch SAS if you use the watch uh, the live SAS compiler plugin uh, because Vite will do that for us, all right? Now, one thing that we can do is we can go back to the terminal and we can just type in now npm run dev. All right, we can control left click. Uh-oh, yep, and that is expected. Uh, Pre-processor preprocessor dependency SAS not found. That's because we need SAS in order to run this. So we're gonna go to view terminal and I'm just gonna type in over here, npm i hyphen d, because it's a development dependency, SAS. All right, so now if I zoom out and go back, we should see this go away. Awesome stuff. Now we'll know that that CSS file is working if we're quickly, we step into it and we type body, background, black. Save it, there we go, we're ready to rock. Awesome stuff. Okay, so what we'll do now is let's structure out our HTML for this. All right, so for the HTML, I'm going to real quickly look on my reference monitor it's gonna be pretty straightforward. So first what we're gonna have is an overall container that houses the loader, okay? So we're gonna call this loader. And yes, I am using M abbreviations to make my life a lot easier when writing HTML. I have a little crash course on, it's like 30 minutes long. You just type in the period, loader, enter. It types out all this other crap that you don't wanna to have to deal with. So inside of loader, we're gonna have um, that five different columns that kind of just shoot up, which I kind of showed you at the beginning of the video. Um, and so in order to have that structure properly, we're gonna create a container for those five div elements. And so that's gonna be called blinder container. I'm calling them blinders. <laughs> okay, so there's gonna be blinder here. Shift alt down, one, two, three, four, five. You want five of them and just save. Now outside of that, this is where our SVG will go. Now I accidentally, <laughs> I overwrote the clipboard that I had from here. So we just right click over here back in Figma, copy as SVG. And then now we're gonna go ahead and paste it in. All right, so now we have some cleanup to do in order to get this to work properly. So what we wanna do first 
is get rid of the width and height attributes. We're gonna go ahead and we'll deal with that manually in CSS. Now, um, we also need a section, and I'm going to include this, uh, a code pen that shows you the full code here in the YouTube description. What I su suggest you do right now is go to that code pen link and paste in the following code because there's a lot of values. You're not gonna be able to sit here and match it up. What this is, is we're gonna create uh, basically a filter, an SVG filter, which creates that goo effect between the drip and then that little arcing part at the top. Um, and so to do that, you have to have this line right here. All right, so what this basically is doing, oops, stop that, there we go. Uh, we have a defs element and then a single filter element. And these three elements right here, Gaussian blur, color matrix, and blend, are basically the prerequisites for creating the goo effect. I'm not gonna sit here and try to describe what FE color matrix and blur and all these values here are. That, that would be a lesson in futility. Um, what you do need to know is that you can change this STD deviation attribute from 10 to something else to affect the actual uh, effect, so to speak. Uh, if you make this value lower, the goo effect will be not very prominent, but higher, you'll see it more so, but you might see more blur. Okay, so after that, what we need to do is uh, figure out what's in our mask. So we have a group here, by the way, and this is uh, these are the elements contained in our, our mask. So I'm pretty certain this path right here is our drip, and we need to give that a class so that we can then animate that properly inside of CSS. So for that class, I'm gonna call this drip hyphen loader, all right? And that's all the HTML for the loader section, all right? But what we want now is the actual content section that will be revealed behind it. So to do that, that's gonna be fairly, sim fairly simple. We'll do section. We're gonna have a, um, a class of mask because I wanna hide the H1 and the paragraph element um, and to animate them in in a kind of like a mask effect sort of fashion. So we're gonna put H1 inside of it, so snazzy. And then we're gonna put a paragraph element with lorem maybe like 20. And there we go. And that's it. That is all we're gonna do for HTML with exception to one other thing. I went to Unsplash and I, I, I downloaded an image and uh, this is image source this doesn't yet exist. So I'm gonna reveal this in File Explorer and I'm going to get out my other project with the assets folder. And now we have this large 425 kilobyte picture that we're hiding with style display none. The reason I'm doing that is because um, the, when we come to part two of this tutorial, we want an image of some sort to simulate the loading progress. And I'll show you and talk about that in the next video, um, releasing in a couple days. But for now, we're just gonna leave this and not really mind it at all. We won't see it because we have display none. Okay, so that's our HTML. Now we're going to go ahead and fast forward to our CSS because right now, uh, if you look at our project, um, we see a whole lot of nothing, <laughs> the big white area. There's probably a big SVG right here, but we can't see it because it's a white on white background. All right, so what we wanna do now is get our body element uh, structured up. So I'm just gonna put a margin zero, a height of 100 viewport height and font family pop-ins. That's installed locally, so we're good on that front. Um, we're gonna go ahead and also take our loader. Now remember, our loader is our first HTML element and it's going to contain our blinder container. So let's work on loader and blinder container as well as blinder inside. All right, so for this to work, we're gonna go ahead and put a height of 100 viewport height, because this is gonna be our, our, our loading graphic and we want it to be 100% height of like the phone or, or the, the desktop browser that it's on, whatever. We're also gonna set width to 100 and put position absolute because we need this to sit on top of everything. And then we're also gonna put a high Z index just to make sure it stays on top of everything. Now, nothing's gonna change visually in the browser yet. So we're gonna take our blinder container and inside of here, we're also gonna do a position absolute and we're gonna to say top zero and then we're gonna say width 100% 
And then we're gonna say height of 100 viewport height as well and display flex because inside of it, we have those three or five rather blinder elements. So now we can go ahead and take blinder, which is inside of blinder container and we're gonna give them all the same background color. So background, all right. So if we save this, we should possibly or not, <laughs> we don't see it yet. Don't worry, we'll get to that point. Uh, what we need to do with blinder, the reason we can't see it is to put a height 100 viewport height. We're gonna hit flex one to make them all equal and then transform origin will be top and this will come in for part two because when we scale each blinder, we wanna make sure it's shifting upward. So we put the transform origin to top. Now we should, I'm fairly confident, there we go. We should see this eye right here. Awesome. Now this right here might be the actual SVG graphic. Um, I'm not sure yet, but we're gonna get this fixed. Okay, so um, what we'll do now is take our SVG element, which is still inside of loader so we're gonna come outside of blinder container and type in SVG. The position will be absolute. And if you um, want to center align that, we're gonna do margin auto and then top zero, left zero, right zero and bottom zero. Okay, those could have all been on the same line, there we go. So if we save it, we go back, we will see this huge graphic, which give it a width, a response, a response of width of like seven viewport width. All right, there we go. All right, so let's hit F12 real quick, uh, because what is that up top? Let me come down here. Okay, that probably has to do with, uh, I want to make sure that we have, uh, Maybe this needs top zero. Let's see here. And let's see if that fixed it. Yes, it did. Okay, so now we have none of that uh, nonsense over there. Okay, so what we wanna do now uh, is actually get this drop animating. It's actually pretty simple. Um, we gave it this path element, which hopefully it's the right path element, um, a drip loader class. So we're gonna come out here all the way to the bottom and we're gonna type in drip hyphen loader animation. We'll call it animate drips one second infinite. All right, so now we're gonna create the keyframes animation called animate drips. And we're gonna say to transform translate y 100 pixels. All right, so save it and if we Okay, so it's almost working. If I zoom up, we aren't seeing the actual goo effect. All right, so now we have to figure out why exactly that is happening. Oh, and that would be because this group right here, we wanna put in filter attribute equals URL, and then the ID of our filter, which is goo. So we put it right here. Save it, hopefully that should be it. There we go, look at that. So let me zoom up here. Now I personally probably make that drip a little bit smaller, but nonetheless, we get the point. So that's gonna be a good spot to stop for this tutorial in the next part of this tutorial releasing in a couple days, which once it's released, I will link it in the YouTube description and probably the top comment here. Um, you're, you're gonna see how we use JavaScript and a library called Images Loaded and GreenSock Animation Platform, otherwise known as the GSAP acronym, in order to get this to load all images uh, that might be on the web page. And then once it's done, create the animation and the reveal effect that will then bring in the main content. All right, everybody, hopefully you enjoyed that. If you did, make sure to visit designcourse.com. If you're interested in learning UI, UX, and or CSS, definitely check that out. There's gonna be a coupon in the description of YouTube here. There's also going to be uh, parity pricing for those of you who lived uh, in countries where the US dollar uh, is just a lot more valuable. So as always, make sure to subscribe and I'll see you soon for part two. Goodbye.